Hey everyone, I just wanted to go over with you all the process that I'm following to code the daily watch list. I hope that this helps because I do get lots of questions about it and I'm hoping that by me explaining it to you that you will understand what I'm doing. For each stock on the watch list, I carefully analyze to see whether or not they hit the line or within a specific range near the line. Remember that we're all taught that the line is an area and not always a specific number. I code each trade as either worked, did not work, or never hit the line. The specific range that I'm looking for is listed here in this image. Let's use the $10 to $20 stock line as an example. I'll want to see that the stock gets to within 25 cents of the line mentioned on the watch list and for the trade to have produced a minimum of 25 cents to say that that trade worked. For example, let's say that Alex has XYZ stock on his watch list and that he's interested in shorting at $14. If the stocks moved to a high of $13.75 and then fades all day to $12, I would code that as worked. If that same stock dropped only to $13.50, I would still consider that as worked because it produced $0.25. Cents. On the other hand, if it only moved to $13.60, producing only $0.15, cents, that would be coded as did not work. If the red to green line or VWAP are mentioned on the watch list, the same rules apply for the distance to the line as I mentioned. One of the hardest decisions I have to make comes when the stock goes against the plan. A trade is coded as did not work when it either hit the line as described earlier, but did not produce the required amount of profit or it went against them to a point where they would have had to stop out. For shorts, I use the pre-market high of day or the previous day's high of day in determining when an individual would stop out, and this would require me to code as did not work. For long trades, I use the pre-market low or the previous day low or a big break of the next pivot point or a big break of daily support lines. Really, each situation may vary, and I'll always describe this in my video overview. To be fair, I only include items that are posted on the watch list. I cannot sift through main each day to find these items. And the move must have occurred during market hours, specifically 9.30 a.m. to 4 o'clock p.m. market time. Pre-market action is not included. It's important to realize that everyone might have a different perspective on whether or not each trade really worked, did not work, or did not meet the lines. I'm trying to be as transparent as possible in my analysis by sharing this process with you. I'm always willing to hear opinions on specific trades and would even consider updating the choices that I've made and reanalyzing if you contact me after your review. I hope that this has helped and that everyone is able to understand how it is that I'm coding these trades. Here are the final results for this month's statistics of the MIC watch list. The handwritten details are based solely on the worked, did not work data, and they do not include the never hit the lines data. From a statistical standpoint, when there are fewer trades posted on the list, the likelihood of higher success percentages are harder to achieve. Keep in mind that the never hit lines stats are not a negative reflection on their lists. The market does not always give us what we want. Thanks to those of you that post on the watch list daily. We really appreciate you. September 1st. Tom wanted RHE 11 to $12, made it to 11.24, and it worked. ACIU, he wanted 9 to $10, it never made it to that level. SYTA, he wanted 5 to $6, it only made it to 435, so uh, it never made it to that line. Alex wanted RHE 11 to 11.50 as well, and it worked. ACIU, 
he wanted $8.50 to $9. It never made it to that level. SPRT was just a warning and not included. GBS, he wanted 5 to 520, 550 range, and it only made it to 487, which is not within 10 cents. So unfortunately, I could not give him credit for this one. ABVC was just a warning and not included in the analysis. SKLZ, he wanted $14 push and rejection, and this one worked. ELYS, he wanted $650 rejection to short, and uh, this one unfortunately did not make it to $650, so it never made it to that line. MRNA, Joe Kelly wanted, said that three, over 385, this had room to move to 400. And he was correct. Over 385, it moved to 394.98. This one worked. September 2nd, Tom wanted ABVC 350 to $4. And this one made it to 350 and it worked. GBS. He wanted four to 450. It did not make it to that level. EVAX, he wanted eight to nine dollars. Here it made it to, actually it made it to eight even earlier on, and it was able to uh, give him minimum of 10 cents. So this one worked. BBIG, he wanted 950 to 10 dollars here it made it to 953 and it worked for alex ipha was a warning and not included in the analysis alex wanted pstv um, at three dollars it never made it to that level sqbg he wanted 859950 it made it to that level and it worked BBIG. He wanted 930, 950, 970. It made it to 950 and it worked. FCUV. He wanted 2150, 2250, 2350. Here uh, at the open, it made it to 2523, but according to the rule, he would not have stopped out unless it went over pre-market high, which it did not do. So this trade did work. September 3rd, Tom wanted C, I'm sorry, SCPS 6 to 650 area, and it did not make it to that level. ANY, he wanted 750 to 850. And here at the open, it made it to 758 and it worked. Alex wanted ANY a little higher at $8 and unfortunately it did not make it to that level. FTFT, he wanted 310, 320 and here it worked. KBSF and FCUV were just warnings and not included in the analysis. BBIG, he wanted 820 to 850. And uh, now, of course, we do not stop out unless it's over pre market hay or, uh, high or the previous day's high, which the previous day's high was uh, over $10. So he would not have stopped out here at the 68 mark. This trade worked. APOP, he wanted $9.50 to $10, and it did not make it to that level. September 7th, Tom wanted FTFT $290 to $320. Uh, right here at the open, it went to $285, and it worked. APOP, he wanted $7 to $8. Um, or even he said he would scale at 680, but it never made it to that level. APOP for Alex, he wanted a red to green rejection or $7 rejection. Didn't make it to $7. However, at the red to green line here, um, it does have a rejection that did allow him to achieve at least 10 cents. So this trade worked. BBIG. 
He wanted to bounce to 830, 850, 870 here at the open. It went to 840 and it worked. IRNT was a warning and not included. RNXT, he wanted $12, $12.50, $13. Or if it tanked at the open under $11, he wanted a VWAP bounce. It did end up tanking under $11 at the open. One might say that this is a VWAP bounce. Unfortunately, because of my protocol, it has to be within 10 cents of VWAP, and it was more than 10 cents, so I coded this as it did not meet the line. ADAP and FTFT were both warnings and not included in the analysis. September 8th, Tom wanted RNXT, 10 to $11.00 and not to hold over $11. So this ran to 11.10 and ended up working. He would not have stopped out here because it did not break over the previous day's high. It's only within 10 cents of his line. And according to what he wrote, it did not hold over that level. So I did give him credit saying that this trade worked. BBIG for Alex was just a warning and not included in the analysis. GANX, he wanted 1020, 1040 to 1060 to short. It did not make it to that level. RNXT for Alex, he was looking for a red to green rejection at the open for a nail and bail. Here is the open, and here is the red to green rejection, which is within 10 cents of the line and achieves more than 10 cents. SPRT was just a warning and not included in the analysis. SPRT, Joe Kelly wanted, uh, if it got over $22, it would have room to move to 25. So for this trade, it didn't get over 22 until the last couple of minutes of the end of the day, but when it got over $22, did achieve um, at least 50 cents, which is the protocol, and so this trade did work. MRNA, he wanted a long at 428. So for here, at 428, um, it's right here at the open. Had he had an order set here for 428 at the open, he would have been able to achieve $3. So I did code this one as worked. September 9th, GANX. Tom wanted 950 to 1050. It only made it to 920. So this one did not meet his lines. AEI, he wanted 260 to 290. So here it made it to 257 and allowed him to achieve at least 10 cents. So this trade worked. CLOV, he wanted 10 to 1050 and this trade worked. GROY, he wanted 5 to 550. Here at the open it went to 538 and it worked. BBIG, Alex wanted 1050, 11 to 1150, uh, and this trade worked. EFTR, now this is one of those trades where many people can have a different view on how they would code this. So I'm going to be transparent and share how I made my decision on this. He was not really crazy about this trade to begin with, but he did say that now that it's broken, I will scale look to scale in short if the red to green line rejects. So here at the end of the day, it does break through the red to green line. Um, it comes back up. Generally, he would wait for um, the rejection at the red to green line, but I don't really consider any of these true rejection, but if he was in at the red to green line, 24.90, he could have achieved at least the 
uh, 50 cents that was required to uh, meet my protocol, but because it didn't really have a true rejection, I chose to code this as it did not meet the line because it didn't do what he was looking for it to do. It's not that it didn't work, it just didn't have that rejection candle that you would look for um, for that rejection. I think everybody might have a different view on this one, but really he's not getting any credit with a two on this anyway. Um, I chose to say it didn't meet the line. CRDF, he was patiently waiting for a death candle or a confirmation candle to nail and bail. So just before zombie, it did crack below VWAP with a lot of volume. So I took that as confirmation and I think he would go on the next bounce and this trade did work. PMCB, he was looking for 4 to 420 and uh, here it did work. September 10th, PMCB, Tom wanted 4 to 430. It never made it to those lines. GEVO, he wanted 8 to 820 and it never made it to those lines. September 13th, GEVO, Tom wanted 750. Uh, actually, he wanted 720 to 760 and it never made it to those lines. BLU, he wanted 5 to 540. So here it got to uh, 514 and it worked. ISEE -E was a warning from Alex and not included in the analysis. BBIG, Alex wanted 1070, 11, 11, 20. So here's one that is going to be up for interpretation here. But according to my protocol, this is over $10 stock. So there's 25 cent leeway from the line. At the open, it went to 1057, which is within 25 cents of 1070 that he wanted on his line and it worked. So I did code this one as worked. SPRT, AFRM were both warnings and not included in the analysis. LPTX, he wanted 220 to 240 and it did not make it to those levels. BLU was just a warning. EFTR, he said to wait for a death candle and then attack at the open. And there was a death candle. Um, and then each bounce worked there on in. So I did code this one as worked. On September 14th, Alex wanted ATER. He was looking for a red to green rejection uh, for first red day setup. And it never made it within the uh, required 25 cents for this trade to be considered as worked. So this was coded as did not meet the lines. BLU, Tom wanted 5 to 550. And here, uh, I'm sorry, right here, it went to uh, 530 and gave him at least 10 cents. So this trade worked. Of course, remember it's nail and bail. Um, you need to not overstay. It did work here on this first move. Um, NNVS, I'm sorry, NNVC, Alex wanted 520, 540. Uh, so here it went to 530s and it worked. DATS, he wanted 750 uh, to 8, and here it went to 773, and it worked. SDC, he wanted 657, uh, 650 to 670, and here it went to 667, and it worked. JCS, he was looking for a pop and a rejection at the open. It never really did that, 
So I just coded this as did not meet the line. LIFE was a warning and wasn't included in the analysis. September 15th, Tom wanted LIFE the 9 to $10 range. And here we got 924 and it worked. SDC, he wanted 590 to 640. And here at the open, it went to 595 and it worked. ATER, he was looking for first red day. Um, he wanted 11 to 12 area for him. Uh, and here it went to 11, 1172 and it worked. IRNT, Alex wanted a morning pop to short. 27, 2750, 28. Unfortunately, uh, this it's above pre-market high here, so I had to assume he would stop out. So I coded this as it did not work. JCS, Alex wanted 9950, and it never made it to, it would only made it to 880. So unfortunately, it didn't make it to his level. INDP was a warning and not included. LIFE, he was looking for a pop to $889. And here we got $893 and it worked. GREE -E was a warning and not included. ATER, he was looking for a red to green rejection. 1150 to 12 was where he would scale. And just like Tom, this went to the 1170s and it worked. September 16th, INDP. Tom wanted 13, 14, 15, 16 dollars he was willing to scale into. It went to 15 dollars and it worked. LPTX. Alex wanted 280 to 3 dollars. And here, um, it went to 275s and it worked. IRNT -I was a warning and not included in the analysis. INDP, he wanted 14 to $15. It went to $15 and it worked. TMC, he wanted, he originally, he updated his his um, watch list later on and wanted $14.20, $14.50 to $15 on TMC. Unfortunately, it did not make it to that level. OPAD, he was looking for a tank at the open and then a rebound to short into. So here it dropped at the open and then he would have gotten this VWAP rejection. So I coded this as worked. September 17th, LPTX. Tom wanted 250 to $3 and here it ran to 250s and it worked. INDP. Alex wanted a morning pop to 12, 1250, and this one never made it to those lines. IPHA, he wanted an $8 pop and rejection to short. So here is $8, and unfortunately it went against him, so I coded this one as did not work. CRVS and HLBZ were just warnings and not included in the analysis. GDEV, he wanted a pop to 13 to scale in every 50 cents above. I really don't think he was going to scale in for $7 worth. So I coded this as did not work. OPAD, he wanted 18 to 1850. Whoops, sorry. OPAD, he wanted 18 to 18.50, and here it went to 17.93, and it worked. IRNT, he wanted 39.40, 41 dollars. 
uh, here's the 17th, it never made it to those levels. September 20th, HLBZ, Tom wanted 17, 18, 19, and it never made it to those lines. CRVS, he wanted 550 to 650, and here we have 560, and it worked. SDC. Alex wanted a morning pop to scale in short $7.50 to $8. Here it went to only, unfortunately, uh, it only went to $7.35, which is not within 10 cents. So this one did not make it to his lines. This is when it's tough, guys, because you see it worked, but you have to stick to your protocol. All right, VSTM. He wanted $350, $370 to $4. Here this went to $358 and it worked. SYBX. He was waiting for a death candle to attack. So here is the 20th and there really was no defined death candle. So I said that this did not make it to his lines because it didn't do what he wanted it to do. HLBZ, he wanted a red to green rejection to short, and uh, this really never, never did that. It, okay, HLBZ, he was looking for a red to green rejection to short, but it never really made it. Uh, below red to green with any substantial amount. So I coded this as did not meet his criteria or um, because it didn't not wasn't that it didn't work, but it didn't really meet his criteria. So he never would have entered this trade. CRVS. He was looking for 6650 rejection. And here we have uh, 650 and it worked. Z-I-V-O, just for the record, he put Z-E-V-O on the watch list, but it's really Z-I-V-O. There is no ticker Z-E-V-O. Uh, he was looking for 650, 7, 750, and here it went to um, 765 and it worked. He would not have stopped out until pre-market high of day. So this one worked. EDSA uh, was just a warning and not included. APRE, he was looking for 6650 line and it never made it to that level. September 21st, Tom wanted EDSA uh, at $10 to $11. So here, before zombie, it only made it to 9.78, which does not count. Um, but here, he did make his $10 and achieved the right amount. So this one did work. Z-I-V-O, Alex wanted either a red to green rejection or a $5 rejection to short. This blue line is not accurate for this day. The previous day's close was 477. Um, so it did not make it to $5 either. So this one did not make it to his lines. CRVS, Alex wanted 6, 620, 640 too short. Um, so here it went to 595 and it worked. VRDN was just a warning and not included in the analysis. EDSA he updated later on and wanted 10, 10, 50 or $11. Um, so here it got to 10.33 which is uh, within 25 cents of the line and it worked. 
NNVC was just a warning and not included in the analysis. BKYI, he also updated later on and was looking for a VWAP rejection. So here, um, he actually had several VWAP rejections uh, before Zombie that worked. September 22nd, Tom originally had CRVS on his watch list. It was the only item on his watch list, but he came back before the open and told everybody to avoid because um, it was acting weird and it was making him nervous. His original plan was 8 to 8.50 with a stop at 8.60. So, <laughs> of course, if he had not said that and not put a stop in, I would have chose pre-market high of day and it ended up would have worked worked, but he um, did say that he wanted everybody to avoid, so I just took it off of the analysis altogether. RWLK, Alex wanted 240, 250, 260. It never made it to those levels. HLBZ, he wanted 30, 32, 34 and it never made it to those lines. NNVC, he wanted uh, 7,750, it never made it to those levels. AEMD, he wanted a VWAP rejection to short at the open, and here at the open he did get a VWAP rejection. So that one worked. MRIN, he wanted $10.50, $10.70, dollars So here at the open, it went to $10.87 and it worked. ONTX, he wanted a VWAP rejection. And again, so now he doesn't stop out until higher than pre-market high of day. Um, I don't know that this was high of day, but it was much higher than his VWAP rejection rejection, which um, we would say worked here. So I did code this one as worked. SAVA was just a warning and not included in the analysis. September 23rd, MRIN, Tom wanted $9 to $10 and it never made it to that line. ONTX, he wanted 6 to 6.50 and it never made it to that line. ATER, he wanted 16.50, 17.17.50, and it never made it to those levels. AMHC, for some reason, uh, Thinkorswim won't let me pull up that chart from the 24th, or any day for that matter. I don't know, maybe this ticker um, closed, but at any rate, uh, another member sent me a chart for this one, AMHC, Tom wanted $13.50 to $15, and here you can see at the open, it worked. VTVT, he wanted $220 to $250, and here it went to $217, and it worked. UFAB, he wanted $360 to $410, and here it did just that, and it worked. CAPR, he wanted $6 to $6.20. It never made it to that level. Some somehow I skipped over RNAZ, which he updated his plan originally to $3.80 and $4. And here it made it to $3.77 and it worked. September 27th, UFAB. Tom wanted 340 to 380, and this ended up working towards the end of the day. BBIG, he wanted 770 to $8, and here at the open, it worked. PALT, he changed his plan uh, a few times. The adjusted plan, the final plan was 550 to $6 and here it worked. September 28th, 
RCAT. Tom wanted 340 to 380. And here it went to 330, which is within 10 cents of the line. And according to my protocol, this worked. SNOA. He wanted 9 to 950, and it never made it to those lines. Okay, ALF. He wanted 790 to 820. So now this is where, you know, sometimes these are difficult and everybody may have a different view. Um, thinking about remembering that you shouldn't be overstaying in any trade. But here it went to 797 and did give at least 10 cents. So I did uh, record this as worked. September 29th, ALF. Tom wanted 8 to 8.50, and it never made it to those lines. SNOA, he wanted 7 to 8 dollars, and it never made it to those lines. AUVI, Alex wanted 8.50, 8.80, 9 dollars, and it never made it to those lines. NCNA, he wanted a pop towards $3 with a 320 stop. So if you look here at this one, it went to 319, so he would not have stopped out, and it worked. FBIO, he wanted a push to VWAP uh, with a rejection to short. It did not make it within the distance to that line, so this one never met those lines. CEI, he wanted uh, 320, 330, 340, 350 with a stop over 375. So this one actually worked several times before it got to his 375 stop, so that one worked. GOVX. He was looking to scale short to VWAP. So even though here it did not make it to within 10 cents of VWAP, he said he was going to scale in short to VWAP. So knowing that here is a uh, resistance line, I know he would have entered there as one of his lines. So I did code this one as worked. September 30th, G-R-O-M, Tom wanted 450 to 550, and here it made it to 466, and it worked. D-A-T-S, he wanted 1450 to $16, and let me just move this over here. Here it made it to 1474, and it worked. P-A-L-T. He wanted 10.50 to $12, stopping over $12. So here, he made it to 11.70, and it did provide at least 25 cents. This one worked. AMTX. Alex wanted 19.50, 20 to 20.50 to short. Here it went to 19.74 and it worked. CTEK, C T E K. Alex wanted 220 to 240. It never made it to those levels. P A L T. He wanted uh, $11. He was starting and he was going to scale every 50 cents because it was topped out the day prior. Here, right at the open, it went to 11.71 and it worked. DATS. He wanted 14, 14.50 to $15 and here it worked. CEI. He said he was going to wait for a death candle and then short the bounce. So here at the open, we had a significant drop from 437 back to the red to green line, and I'm sure he probably uh, shorted each of these bounces back to VWAP. So this one worked.